how, how did you how, did you know when how did you find out that you had actually won a gold medal when I saw it on the boat a coach from the USA number one he told me that uh, one of the uh, officials came over and told me I'm coaching me come on go to the pole I didn't know what was going on I went on stood up there and they started uh, playing the uh, national anthem. It was wonderful to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Did you figure it out then <laughs> when they started playing the national yeah, anthem? Yeah, because what I had gone through before that. My coach had cussed me out before uh, before the meet. Told me, you sitting up here, you're going to be just like the rest of them. Uh, all the rest of the girls had failed. There was not a, a, a second place there. There wasn't a first place. This is in track and field. Now, I'm not talking about swimming and the other thing. Everyone had failed. We had a third place there and a fourth place. But the fast girls that we had here that went over were just like little babies standing still among blank of corn and the rest of them. And I was the last one, the last hope. And when we got there, August the seventh, she wanted me to work out the day before, and I wouldn't. And she laid it on me that day. You gonna be just like the rest of them. Sit around here, and you ain't going nowhere, and you won't come up with nothing. And the man in there massaging me down, getting me ready for that England weather. And it was dreary that day, too. And she just paging up and down, up and down, up and down. And I need to work out yesterday. I said, I don't work out on the day before with my meat. And oh, she's just fussing. I just let her fuss all she wanted to fuss. I understood her because I was on the All-American team for three years. And I was the only black on that team. And I had to uh, go with her, with that all-American team, to Montreal. So I was with her. I understood her. I let her do all her preaching and all her fussing. But I was talking to the man above, telling him, if it's your will, let it be done. And obviously it was his will. Did you? I didn't worry about it anymore. I just went out there. And one of the things that uh, I had, that I had carried for 10 years, that's a lemon. I had that lemon was my good luck along with God's will. And that's all I needed. A lemon. And God's will. So when you took the, your final jump. I mean, what did you do with the lemon? You had, did you rub it? Did you? I, I I read someplace that you that you would touch it to your mouth, the lemon or something, and it would make you. Yes, the lemon. To me, many drink uh, Gatorade, many drink water, many uh, eat this. We had a girl on our track team, and one sitting here now. They had to eat husher. And get the husher bar and give them strength and energy. A lemon was mine. I had to go up and jump over. So I had to have this energy. I had to be light. And if I drank that water, that water would be too heavy. The gator aid would be too heavy. But my mouth would be dry. And with this lemon, all I had to do is to squeeze a little of that lemon juice in my mouth, and that would take care of the thirst. And so, before your your championship uh, jump, is that what you did? You, you I did it between before. Between? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Anytime my mouth got got dry, I would just uh, take a squeeze from that lemon, mm -hmm. and that would take care of my drinking. A lot of water, 
uh, Gary because after an hour or two, that water in Gary was settled in your stomach and get heavy, and I couldn't jump, take that water, and go over that bar, that high, with a lot of water and Gary in my stomach. I had to stay light, and this lemon juice would keep me light. <laughs>